we have a number of programmes here at Royal Birmingham Conservatoire in music technology related study. The Bachelor of Music uh, BMUS programme um, is very much aimed at the creative music technologist, so people who are composing and creating a range of different content, which might be recordings, it might be production, it might be electroacoustic composition, it might be sound to picture, but very much from a creative point of view. Our Bachelor of Science programme uh, has a slightly different emphasis in that it is still very much about recording and producing and working with musicians and producing high quality content, but very much with a strong technical underpinning. Um, so we will have those students studying acoustics, audio electronics, and also doing uh, things like business and the way that the industry works. We also have master's programmes where you can study music technology at uh, postgraduate level. And we also have research going on here. So we have PhD students that are studying a whole range of uh, activity that is in some way related to music, uh, music technology. We're talking about developing some new courses and things, but obviously a lot of things were in place before I ever came here, which is just about two and a half years now. Um, we have a really good academic team. Um, they just get terrific results all the time. Um, research is, is very, very strong here. Um, the place is actually really on a bit of a roll, I think. So at the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire, we have now a, the, the only dedicated jazz venue in the city. And um, that was specifically uh, the brainchild of our head of jazz to have this room that was, you know, waiter table service in the evenings, a real kind of club uh, feeling to it. And um, obviously with, with jazz music, um, we've got some amplification in there for supporting uh, live bands and we fitted that out with a, an SSL L300. Uh, that venue is used on a daily basis. We have a gig in there every night. Um, the first three nights of the week are student-led uh, gigs and then the remainder are student bands with guest special, art, special guest artists. So far it's been extremely popular. It's really kind of packed out most nights, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's doing really well. And we've had some really good feedback from some of the guest artists that have come over from the States and done gigs in there. And they've absolutely loved the, the venue, loved the acoustic, loved the sound of uh, what comes out of the, the PA. The desk itself doesn't go through any particular technology post its use. So it's, it's analog lines into the desk. Um, and then from there, it's process within the desk a little bit of like say small amount of sort of um of effect or whatever you want to put on there mm. and a little bit through the pa that's the sort of most light touch there's no there's no mm. difficulty in students to understand how that goes it's very much sort of in you do something with it it goes out mm. um, and the students like it in there to be able to use that and it's a, it's a good introduction to the desk We, in our old building, we had a place called the Recital Hall, which was for traditional recitals, but also had the ability to do music technology in that space and a surround sound system. And it was used a lot for sort of experimental music technology style gigs um, and, and uh, composition. Um, so in this, we, we only had the opportunity to build a proper black box space, which we could use for pretty much anything we wanted production-wise. We could do, we can do opera in there. We can do music technology. We can project anywhere we want to. The the gantry has multiple uh, inputs for uh, audio and video, for I, IP, and even coax things like that. So we can do a lot of sort of flexible stuff in there, and we can hang hologors or something like that uh, uh, off, so we can project uh, above and below the sort of gantry level. Um, so we uh, have an L300 which fits into that space um, it connects slightly differently in, in there than it does everywhere else so it goes from a microphone analog into a stage box and from a stage box via MADI into a desk from, a, from the desk to Dante from Dante to a matrixing system and then from a matrixing system via AES to the Galileo and from Galileo back out to uh, to, to audio through the to the Maya sound system so which is a 10.2 Surround sound yeah. system as well, so yeah, yeah quite so a complex. It is a quite a complex in. system in there. Um, and it gives our students a great overview of all of those technologies because they have to understand it how it works. I mean, you can, fortunately, plug it in 
and play and it works it's rooted and it remembers the roots and all those things but uh, um, as soon as you want to actually scratch the surface of it there's a lot of information there for students to be able to look at and go okay how does this work this is quite a complex sort of e ecosystem of, uh, of of audio um that we're using and within all within microseconds of you know to actually get the audio into the audio out of the system so you can play live along to it the recital hall is a 150 seat uh, venue uh, with retractable uh, seating so it can be opened out for uh, kind of orchestral subsection rehearsals and things like that or for you know they do dance uh, kind of stuff in there um, with having a floated floor but it, the very fact that it has this kind of multi-channel surround system in there as well it could be a u another multi-purpose venue for sound diffusion kind of work um, which you know um, we have that flexibility with the L300 to be able to matrix. So every single speaker is addressable from the matrix within the desk. So we can do our kind of live diffusion, even if you're just sending in a stereo feed into the desk, we have you know control over all the individual speakers. Um, so yeah, it's a very flexible space, even though its title of recital hall is kind of thought of more of a traditional kind of um, performance venue. Um, Again, it's a, uh, it's not 10.2 is it it's, uh, it's 8.2 at the moment yeah, yeah. 8.2 um, in, in there um, but the the connectivity is uh, SSL led in there rather than just going through to Dante to the, the audio system mm -hmm. it actually goes from the stage box to the L300 out of the L300 by a fibre to a blacklight concentrator uh, and from there AES into the Galileo system so slightly different in, in the way that it works um, and uh, we've still learning about the best sort of uh, methods of that at the moment really with the, with, with the blacklight system uh, it's a great fantastic expandable system it means that we can because all of our buildings fibre interoperable so we can actually set, we can connect all of our desks up and have a master desk and mm -hmm. use that to control our other venues if you want to via blacklight which is a great flexible sort of infrastructure it's a complete sort of a uh, fibre ring of, mm -hmm. of control from one venue if we need to to a sort of multi-venue festival type thing again as the students sort of go through their journey with with the kit they get to see how the sort of more analog side of it is the more digital side of it is the way the pickoffs can work and then up to how complete sort of self-contained ecosystems can work of kit um and they sort of uh, that, that they can pick that off and and it's fairly transparent when you start to read the manuals and actually when you go through the interface of the desk of how that's actually set up as well because there's a pretty picture of a kit <laughs> and you know when you go from there and you look in the rack room you say okay that's what that is and i can understand that it's not just a name with some sort of io on it it's that is the device which is that device there and it works in this way because of the flexibility that we uh, decided we would need in this building um, our control rooms our recording control rooms were able to we knew they were going to be able to address any space. So we have what we've called the recital hall control room on level one of the building. So it's really only called that because it's next door to the recital hall. And it does have our traditional analog connectivity. So when you plug in uh, microphones in the actual venue itself, it will hit the SSL stage box. Then we have the transformer isolated splits that go off to the recital control room, which we can pick off and they hit the Duality 24 uh, that's uh, in that space. So we have that analog uh, reassurance as well as the uh, Dante uh, flexibility. We have video screens in that control room. So it does mean that although we haven't got a window into the uh, venue itself, we can uh, watch uh, what's actually going on in that space but because we have that Dante flexibility we could use that recital control room to pick off any of the other venues um, so uh, we could video switch to the lab video switch to the jazz venue or you know any other space that we uh, hook up a camera to and be able to use that space it's a surround sound room so we do 5.1 mixing in there we can also obviously do source uh, recordings at 5.1 with that kind of sound field and multi mic techniques and everything in that space and we can obviously pull those up, that audio into the duality and work in a very nice surround environment 
The main concert hall is a near 500 seater venue. Um, it has a left center right uh, PA system, point source PA system with a ring of 13 individual speakers. Yeah. And with that kind of flexibility, the amount of channels that we actually built into the infrastructure for, for the main stage. I mean, the stage is large enough for a full symphony orchestra. That's what, you know, it was kind of designed obviously for that. Um, but with, uh, we've got 64 analog tie lines, haven't we? And then with the ability to address loads more than that. Um, and we have an L500 in that venue. Yep, same, yeah, set up in the, uh, the that's addressed in the same way that the, uh, the recital hall is used. So we use uh, mat the matrix again output mm. for that mainly. Um, but we do have we, uh, we we have got it set up as well so that we can individually assign each channel to each speaker if we need to. There's there's the the, the show files in that in that space are slightly different because obviously we can load those in on the fly. But mm -hmm. we we have separate show show files for for our students to use for different scenarios. And one of the sort of scenarios in there is to be able to have any element of the orchestra they want to mic up individually and put that on an individual sort of speaker mm -hmm. as a uh, for experimental sort of um, orchestral diffusion within that space uh, it gives us massive flexibility so um it's it's and it sounds amazing in that space as well the acoustic is just mm, really it's fantastic incredible. it's variable um with the uh, with the banners and uh, but generally i mean everyone that's come into and come through that space so far has just said how fantastic it sounds and um so our students really like to play in there it's become a sort of it, when it's not being used the students come in at six o'clock in the morning to practice in there as mm. well they? it's a, it's a really nice place to use um, the setup it, it, again is the is a black light, so it's sort of the master black light really um, from there because it's the L five hundred with the uh, with the most channels, mm. um, and it's connected through to our concert hall control room uh, with analog tie lines, um, but also there's the, the the IP infrastructure as well if we want to take that up and and transfer anywhere you want to as well. But it, it goes up to our uh, our concert hall control room with our our Duality forty eight in that space. Um, which, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is, is <laughs> it's yeah, become one of the most popular control room of the lot now, isn't it? It's yeah, well, it's a it's a lovely big room. It's uh, five point one mix room, uh, say for duality forty eight. It's uh, yeah, becoming a very popular space. Yeah. <laughs> so on level four of the building, we have a dedicated zone uh, for our recording studios. Um, so we have six out of the seven total recording studios in this zone, and they each kind of have their own kind of character and flavor. As said, the main concert hall control room is a 5.1 uh, room with a Duality 48. Our next uh, flagship room um, with a Duality 24 is Studio One. That is connected uh, to our largest of the two live rooms that we have, uh, which is it's a 57 square meter live room space, double height, uh, with acoustic um, acoustic banners uh, to adjust the acoustics in there. Um, we have a second live room, which is uh, about 35 square meters, double height again. But that room is uh, unique in, uh, in this space that it's flanked by two identical uh, control rooms. Both have uh, SSL um, 948s and there's analog connectivity, separated uh, analog connectivity between two spaces. So in one space, there could be somebody doing a mix whilst there's a tracking session going on uh, with the other control room, or they could actually be, from an educational point of view, we could have a setup in the live, in the live space and both control rooms are being used simultaneously. It's great for our students to have, have a, uh, um, two, two identical studios really. Um, well, almost identical studios flanking the live room. So, uh, we can separate the groups up, mm. um, and it gives them the opportunity to to sort of obviously familiarise fam familiarise themselves with the the desk, but also uh, they you'll find with two different groups you get different flavours straight away of how they how they mix things uh, within mm. the two different rooms. I think the standards here are already amongst the best in the country. Um, we have incredible visiting artists. We have people like James Galway, Nigel Kennedy's coming in for a residency. We have these top names coming in all the time. And 
that obviously is uh, attracting greater and greater recruitment um, with the new building uh, across the board, um, postgraduate, undergraduate, EU, international, home students, the, it's up. All the uh, applications are up. So what that means is that we can p- pick and choose students, I guess, and really go for the best. Or um, It's not always a, also about technique, it's about potential. And if we see someone who looks like being a really outstanding musician, and we can develop them over the, the four years, we may well go for someone like that, over someone who comes in all technically equipped in the first place. We, we are looking for musicians with something personal to say. And I think we're a conservatoire that really tries to develop the students as individuals rather than just sort of say, go away and practice and uh, and see what happens. We, we are far more hands-on than that. And um, I want to see this conservatoire to, to be the best in the country. And best in the country um, really means best in the world.